turning now to chronic hepatitis B. The real challenge with hepatitis B that has made it very difficult to cure is that the HPV virus persists in chronically infected hepatocytes as an extra chromosomal genome called CCC DNA. And unless we are able to eliminate CCC DNA, there's always the potential that the virus can reactivate. So the strategy that we're using here is using a lipid nanoparticle to deliver an Arcus enzyme that recognizes a conserved site in the HBV genome. That nuclease then cuts its target site in CCC DNA or in cases where CCC DNA was able to integrate into the genome. It, it inactivates the virus, leading to durable antigen loss and hopefully a functional cure. We generated some data in primary human hepatocytes in collaboration with Gilead a few years ago, and we've, we've shared this previously, basically showing that we can introduce Arcus on either a lentivirus or mRNA into infected primary hepatocytes. We see sig significant reductions in CCC DNA. We see the introduction uh, of a significant frequency of indel mutations that inactivate the virus in the remaining copies. And then that, that combination, reduction in total CCC DNA and the introduction of inactivating mutations, the combination of the two then results in significant reductions in secretion of HBV S antigen. So this was a very nice data set, but then we sort of ran into a science brick wall because there is no good model of human HBV infection. The standard models in HBV are woodchuck and duck. But woodchuck has to be infected with woodchuck HBV, and ducks have to be infected with duck HBV. And those viruses are actually quite a bit different, uh, quite a bit different from the human virus, and the target site for our nuclease is not conserved in the other viruses. So the project was sort of stuck because we didn't have an animal model that we could actually do dose ranging studies on. I'm very pleased to say uh, that we very recently figured out a way to overcome this challenge and have developed an entirely new model for human HBV infection. And to do this, we borrowed a page from our collaborators at Penn. We recognized that HBV actually has a lot of similarities to AAV. In particular, they both infect hepatocytes, and they're both able to establish latency as extrachromosomal circular DNA elements. So what we did is we cloned the open reading frames from hepatitis B into an AAV vector. We can then introduce that AAV vector into an animal, and that can be either a mouse or a non-human primate. The vector goes to the nucleus and hangs out there as a circular piece of DNA. That circular genome produces S antigen mRNA, which then secretes S antigen protein into circulation in the animal. We can then come in with our Arcus lipid nanoparticle, which cuts the virus DNA leading to a loss in production of S antigen mRNA and reductions in the amount of S antigen protein that gets secreted into circulation. So we actually have three different biomarkers that we can look for in this model. We can look for reduction in S antigen in circulation. We can look for reduction in total viral DNA. And we can look for the production of inactivating indel mutations in the virus open reading frames. Here's what that looks like first in a mouse. When we, we run this model in an immunodeficient mouse, uh, we see that animals that are treated with the Arcus LNP have a significant reduction in total viral DNA uh, and the introduction of a very significant number of inactivating indel mutations into the virus. Those two together, reduction in virus, and inactivating mutations then give us 
very significant reductions in secreted S antigen. So we see about a 95% reduction in S antigen production in the animals treated with Arcus. So a very, very nice animal model, a very good demonstration of, of LNP delivery of Arcus. We can also run the model in a non-human primate. In this case, we see even more significant reductions in total AAV copy number, so total viral DNA, and the introduction of those inactivating mutations into the genome. In this case, the non-human primate is immunocompetent. So the, the animal's immune system actually neutralizes the S antigen before we can detect it. So S antigen isn't going to be a useful biomarker in primates, but, but we really don't need it because between AAV copy number and indels, we have very good biomarkers that we can use to do dose ranging studies in primates. So we, we feel like we've overcome the major challenge in front of us to generating the IND enabling data that we're going to need for this program. It is full steam ahead on HPV. We expect to file the CTA for this program in 2024.